So I'm going to start the recording. OK, so hello. Welcome to the class. I'm your teacher, Michael. How are you? I don't think you can see me. I have a very bad camera. Hello, hello. But it's OK. So I'm your teacher, Michael. Uh, welcome. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Anita, and I'm now in grade nine. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I'm 14 years old, and I turned 15 in uh, this October 24th. Okay, very nice, very nice. Happy, early happy birthday for you. Very nice. Okay, very good. So I heard you're having trouble with writing. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So today we're going to be focusing a lot on writing. Um, it's not going to be so much reading, but there's going to be more writing. Maybe in the next classes we'll be focusing on, on reading and writing together. But for now, let's do writing because I heard that's what you need help with, right? Okay, let's do this warm-up exercise. I want you to write about yourself and describe the, your best qualities and your personality. You can type in the chat. Do you know how to type in the chat? Say hello. I think so, yeah. yeah. Yes. So you can type your, uh, uh, write about yourself, right? Describe your best qualities and your personality. And you can write everything in the chat, okay? And then we'll re review it together and then see how you can improve on your writing, okay? Okay, um, how much do I need to write? Uh, you have five minutes to write. If you can finish uh, quicker than five minutes, it's fine, but you have five minutes. Okay. And let me know if you need any help with words or spelling. Okay.
Okay, so let's see what we have so far. Okay, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll send it. Okay, all right. Looks like you have oh, quite a lot. Very good. Let me make a new uh, page here on the PowerPoint. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay, can you read this for me, please? Your answer. Okay, my hobbies include many. Okay, uh, my hobbies include many things, such as playing the ukulele and painting. I started to learn how to draw since I was a young age. I adore dogs. I'm excellent at swimming and running too. I'm hard to get along with at first sight, but my closest friends know that I am truly humorous and interesting. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, so my hobbies include many things such as playing ukulele, right? This is ukulele and painting. Very good. I started to learn how to draw since I was at a young age. I adore dogs. I'm an excellent at swimming and running too. I'm excellent and swimming at swimming and running too. That's a little awkward, but I think it's okay for now. We'll fix that maybe later in the future. I'm I'm hard to get along with at first sight, but my closest friends know that I'm truly humorous and interesting. Very good, very good. You write really well. Um, but for some some uh, some suggestions, um, I would recommend to write maybe a little bit more simpler in the future, right? So you can probably write more quickly, okay? Okay. Okay, so these are some writing tips that I would recommend for any student who is trying to learn uh, uh, to write, either for the IELTS or uh, as a second language. Can you read these tips for me, please? Write as simple as possible, but make sure to answer the prompts or essay questions. Do not focus on spelling or grammar until the end of the writing progress. Just make sure you answer the question correctly. Once you have under answered the question to the prompt, then go back, edit your essay or writing, then check for grammar or and, spell and spelling errors. Remember to use transitional words or phrases, illustration with words, use vivid language and adjectives. So, uh, I want to stress on the last points. This, these are things I feel like uh, you, you do really well on illustration, but I think you should work on uh, transitional phrases. Transitional phrases or words are like, however, although, uh, but, uh, on the other hand, right? Oh. I, I think you should work on more on transitional phrases, right? Because uh, there's many topics that you covered here in your writing, but um there are many different topics and sometimes we should transition to a different topic with transitional phrases right or transitional words right on the yeah. other hand however although um and on top of my head etc right mm -hmm. okay very good very good okay so let's i still want to examine more of your writing so let's do this this is a little uh, um uh, quick writing assignment this is just based on your opinion is it important for students to learn in a physical classroom today or an online classroom just as good? Why or why not, right? So what I want you to do is that I want you to write uh, if a physical classroom is better or is an online classroom better, right? So I want to, uh, and I want to know why or why not, right? So uh, you're kind of persuading me, but also giving me your opinion, okay? So you're doing two things. Give me your opinion and persuade me, okay? Those are the two things that I want. Okay, so I'm gonna give you, let's say three minutes to do this. I think this is really easy to answer, okay? And try to write as simple as, as you can, okay? We okay. just wanna answer the prompt.
Okay, so let's see what we have. I'm gonna put this, let me make another slide. Wrong one, sorry. This is this one. Okay, can you read your answer for me, please? Yeah, um, I believe studying in a physical classroom is better. Mm -hmm. And what else? I, I believe studying in a physical class is better. with teachers as easily physical classes. Mm -hmm. uh, teachers will Okay, very nice. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Okay, so I believe in studying in physical classrooms is better, right? Very nice. During an online class, very nice new comment. During an online class, students can communicate with teachers very easily as in a physical class. True. Teachers will, will teach better if they can understand the students' needs. Students' needs, right? This is a, we have to put a apostrophe here, right? Because this is, this is yeah. a possessive, right? Uh, possessive means like it belongs to somebody, right? So we're talking about the needs of the students, right? The students mm -hmm. have a need, and so it belongs to them, right? So we put a apostrophe here. So ooh, can I let me edit? I don't think it lets me edit. Let me see here. Okay, so we put an apostrophe here. It won't let me put one, but... <clears throat> ah, okay, that's why, because it, makes, it thinks I'm in the chat. Okay, a student's needs, right? We put an apostrophe here. Online classes are only necessary when students are not available to go to physical classes. Very good. Very good. Okay, so let's see how we can make this a little bit better. It's good, but let's see how we can make it better. I believe studying in physical classrooms is better. During online classes, students can't communicate with teachers as easily as in physical classes. Teachers, well, teachers will teach better if they can understand the students' needs. Online classes are only necessary when students are not available to go to classes. Okay, so I think, because um, right here, the first part, we're talking about how uh, physical classes are better. And then we're talking about how online classes are, can be challenging, right? So yeah. what transitional phrase or transitional word we can use here to, because these are two separate ideas, right? This idea is talking about physical classes are good. And then this idea right here, or even to the bottom, is talking about how um, uh, 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 online classes are not as good as physical classes, right? So right here, we kind of change the, the tone of the writing, right? Because the first part, we're talking about physical classes are good. Online classes are good too, but they, they have certain challenges, right? So what can we put yeah. here to kind of... Uh, uh, transition to this new idea, right? Because we went from physical classes, good, online classes, good, but with challenges, right? What can we say about this right here in the middle? I think we should put a transitional phrase here. What transitional phrase we might use? What about we have uh, transitional phrases like however, although, right? On the other hand, Right, um, but including additionally, right? What do you think might fit here? Um, in addition? Yeah, in addition, very good. In addition, in addition. Right, because you we we are adding new information. Right, this is the new information that we're letting us know that teachers need to understand students' needs. Right, very good, very nice. Okay. Let's see, if we have here. Oh, I want to go back to your first essay too. Um, I adore dogs. 
right? So something I've seen with your writing as well is that um, I see that it's um, like, it's structured in a very um, simple way, right? Which is good with the writing, but when you said, I adore dogs, right? These are the things that you like. You listed all the things that you like doing, right? You play ukulele and painting. You started drawing when you're at a young age. You like dogs, right? So, but the correct answer would be, I also adore dogs, right? Because this is kind of something uh, as separate on, on its own, but you're kind of listing things that you like, right? You say, I like ukulele and painting. I learned how to draw. I also adore dogs. Also adore dogs. Also is like you're letting us know that these are the things that you enjoy, right? You enjoy doing these things. These are the things that you've learned. And you also do this as well, right? Mm -hmm. So it's also it's really good to put it also because it lets us know that you're you you are um kind of concluding what you like at the end, right? Because at this part, we're talking about what you do, right? What you're good at. And this first part, we're talking about what you like, right? So they're, they're a little bit different. So I think we'll have to work on that in the next class because uh, we need to learn how to, to uh, kind of transition and also uh, learn how to end your sentence in a proper way, okay? Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's do this exercise right here. What career are you best suited for, right? One to two professionals, professions, where you would excel at. So what what do you think, what job or career you'd be professional for, right? Or be excellent for. I want you to write maybe one to two sentences on this, simple sentences, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. But you can also tell me too, what do you think you would excel at? Let's, let's talk before yeah. we rewrite. What would you think we'd be good at? Right? You said you were good at architecture. What was that? Can you repeat again? Hello, hello, Athena. Can you hear me? Hi. Uh huh. Still thinking? I will. Oh. Looks like you might have been connection issues, Athena. Mm -hmm. If not, you yeah. can write it in the chat. Just write it in the chat instead because it looks like your connection <laughs> is difficult. So uh, let's write, it. yeah, let's write, this let's write this answer in the chat for this question. What career would, are you best suited for? Okay. Okay. Remember, I just only want two sentences, just two sentences, because we're about to be finished, I think, in four minutes.
Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay. I wish to be an architect because it includes designing and thinking. Okay, let's do this. Let's copy and paste this, go with a new slide. Let's kind of go over this very quickly. Hold on, I think my audio is going bad. Hold on. Okay, I wish to be an architect because it includes designing and thinking. I wish to build things that will make a better living condition for us all. Okay, um, this, is, this is written correctly, but it's written in a way that's awkward. Right, living conditions. I want to. Right, I wish to. Like that. I wish to be an architect because it includes designing and thinking. So previously, you had two wishes, like right here. Let me highlight this. In the past, this was wishes. Right, we wanna use two different verbs. We don't wanna keep repeating the same verbs, right? I'll put this in here. We don't want to repeat using the same verbs, right? We had wish and then we had wished over here, right? Uh, the reason why is that it kind of makes it for boring uh, uh, reading or writing, right? We, every time, every time you write, Every time you write something, use a different verb. They can have, they can be a verb with the same meaning, right? Or the same kind of uh, context, but always use something different, right? You can't say, I wish, I wish, I wish, right? This is kind of repetitive. It repeats too much. It repeats too much, right? I know, that, I know I said to keep it simple, but also try to repeat your, uh, I mean, try to change your verbs as well, right? Let's see, what's another thing? Let's go with one more thing. A better living condition conditions for us all. Okay, I think this can be written in a better way. Let's say that I want to build uh, these things because, because I want to improve people's living conditions right yeah right this is this is much more effective than what you wrote because it's it's this is written in a way i understand what you said but this might confuse some people who are not english teachers right uh people who are english teachers may not understand what this means right so definitely we have to work on uh kind of rewording your sentences to be less awkward and as well try to uh, prevent repeating and as well, work on transitional phrases, right? Work on transitions and making things simple and fixing awkward writing and more, right? So these are the things I feel like we should work on in the next coming classes, okay? So do you have okay. any questions or comments, Athena? Uh, no. Okay, so you did a really good job today, right? I hope to see you soon, right? And remember to continue practicing your 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 writing and your reading, okay? In the next few classes, okay. we'll be working on that. So have a good day. Hopefully you can see me, right? Have a good day and take care, okay? Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.